I'm Mark Callian, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. LED lighting is one of the hottest trends in the saltwater tank industry right now, and I'm pumped that it's here. And while I love my metal halide lamps, I'll be happy when I don't have to deal with the heat that they produce and the dent that they put in my electricity bill. But I'm not quite ready to throw these halides in the trash just yet. I simply haven't found an LED fixture and an LED setup that I want to go with. And I'm not willing to use my 90 gallon tank as a testing grounds. For that reason, I've set up an experiment for us to test one of the hottest LED fixtures out there. And I've put a twist on this experiment as well, so it's not going to be quite what you think it is. For my LED experiment, I'm going to be using a 2 foot by 2 foot by 2 foot cube tank, which works out to be about 60 gallons of water volume. I'm dubbing this tank Fat Jack. Of course, Fat Jack will be roof ready with a built in overflow because it absolutely will not use a hang on back overflow box. They are bad news. I'll be using a 1 inch dorso overflow and a 3 quarter inch return line. Fat Jack will be living at my friend's house because my wife cut me off from buying another tank. I tried it, I begged and I pleaded, but I was denied. It's easier than it looks. No two saltwater tanks will ever act the same way. We could set up two identical tanks, start with dead rock, dead sand, get them going on the same day, use the same salt water, put in the same chemicals, and they could act completely differently. For that reason, I'm gonna get rid of the biology and the chemistry equation from our experiment. And how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm plumbing Fat Jack, our cube, directly into this existing 120 gallon system. That way, the chemistry and the biology in Fat Jack will be the same as in our big tank at the same time. So we're getting rid of that biology equation. Now, how are we gonna get the water over to Fat Jack from this tank? I'm gonna use the Tunzi 1073.05 return pump. You've seen me talk about this pump, and one of the things that I've said that's great about it is that this pump has variable speed. So we don't have to guess about how much flow we need going over to Fat Jack. Since it's variable flow, all we gotta do is turn a knob on the control box or change the setting in our Apex controller to dial in the flow that is exactly what we want. And of course, it's completely silent and runs very cool as well. You can't beat that. We've got our return pump set. Now we just need to feed our drain line over from Fat Jack and start filling the tank. Here's a nice thing about being a reef junkie. All we gotta do to fill up Fat Jack, turn on the Tunsley return pump, turn on a valve outside to pump in the salt water, and we're filling that sucker right up. No more of this hauling buckets and trying to raise stuff up in the air, dumping in Fat Jack, spilling stuff everywhere, making a mess. None of that. Turn a valve, shoots the water in. All we gotta do is sit here and make sure everything doesn't overflow once it gets full. You can't beat that. I'll take a beer. At this point, you gotta be asking yourself, well, what the heck LED setup did he go with? Did he DIY something? Did he buy strips? Did he make a whole big fixture? What the heck did he go with? Well, I'll show you. I went with the Aqua Illuminations Soul fixture. And why did I do that? Well, a couple of key reasons. Number one, the Soul is controllable, either through Aqua Illuminations controller that they'll sell you, or through our Neptune Apex controller. Either way, we can vary the intensity, set up custom programs for our lighting with this puppy. Number two, the optics on this. Aqua Illuminations, I think, has some of the best optics out there. These puppies will get the light absolutely down to the bottom of our two foot cube. I'm not worried about that at all. In fact, I'm predicting that we're probably gonna burn up a couple corals, putting them underneath these intense lights. And number three, and the big reason that I went with the Aqua Illumination Soul fixture is that this thing is modular. So as LED technology changes, cause it's gonna happen, we're not stuck with the array and the lighting and even the lenses that Aqua Illuminations give us. As Aqua Illuminations comes out with different lenses or different LEDs, we can interchange those with our existing setup. Now modularity is one of my biggest, biggest, biggest things that I preach about LED technology. It has to be modular. This technology is moving so quickly that if you buy a big fixture where all the LEDs are already soldered in and you can't take them out, you're really screwing yourself. Because if something changes in six months and you say, oh, well now this new LED is proven to be better or I want a different color, you're hosed. You can't do anything. Now, you might be one of the types that's gonna tear apart your whole fixture and get in there and re-solder things, but that's not me. I'm not gonna do that. So. Modularity has to be part of any LED setup that you look at. Here's how we mounted this whole fixture. Since this is gonna be in our living room where everything is about looking clean and nice, we didn't wanna go with Aqua Illumination's hanging kit from the ceiling. Instead, we fabricated our own little custom wood bracket and we're about 10 to 11 inches off the height of the water. Aqua Illuminations recommends 12 to 14 inches. We're a little bit below that, so I expect to see more light down in the bottom of the tank. And you're asking about, well, will LED shimmer? Take a look at the bottom of the tank and 
judge for yourself. Keeping in mind that the overall point of this experiment is to see how will SPS coil grow as compared to halides, which is on this tank, to the LED fixture over here. I have no doubt in my mind that SPS coral can grow. I've personally burned up some of my own under some LEDs that have testing, so I'm not so concerned about that fact. I will be interested to see how the growth rates vary and to see how the color variations between the halide lights and the LED lights. And I don't mean, does this light make it look more blue? I'm talking about, does the coral actually change color or morph because it's under the different types of lightings? Now, for data purposes, we've got two 400 watt halides over the 120, and we have one aqua illumination sole over here under our two foot cube. One aqua illumination sole fixture doesn't equal 800 watts of halide lighting like we have under the 120. In the future episodes, I'll be grabbing a PAR meter and measuring the light output at different depths so we get an idea of how the different lighting performs. But for the sake of today's video, we're just getting the everything set up, giving you an overall view of the experiment so you can see how things are working. So keep an eye for future episodes of Mr. Saltwater Tank TV, where I dig more into the data and the science behind this setup. I'm excited to see where our LED experiment goes. I definitely think LEDs are the way of the future, and we'll see if they become man's new best friend. I want to give a shout out to Aqua Illuminations. Thanks for being a part of the video. And if you want to keep an eye on the build and see how corals are reacting under the fixture, go to mrsaltwatertank.com slash LED build. I'm Mark Callie and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Until next time, have a good one, enjoy your tanks, and know your tank personality. Aw, oh, good dog. Good dog eating. <laughs>